This is uh, me and Pavel Brezina. We are walking back to our stand to collect our machines because it is race day and we're less than 30 minutes away from takeoff. So the nerves are high, everyone is uh, kicking tires, lighting fires, and uh, the peanut gallery, everybody's watching, which is my biggest worry because I'm not, I'm not a crowd, please, <laughs> I get stage fright. So this is gonna be some, some exciting stuff, but hopefully we can get in, get in the air with our full payloads and uh, get to where we're going as quickly as possible. See you guys in the next one. All right, so at this point, everything is going real good. Uh, optimism is high. Spirit is there. Everybody's ready. All 29 races on the, on the line. And uh, you know what happened to optimism? It went to the Icarus to die right after the first takeoff. That's right. So yeah, that's what happened to me. Um, got a perfect takeoff. Everything went as planned. And then my fuel line, my reserve fuel line, got choked up somehow between the bag and the machine because I was so rushed to take off. We had a grid takeoff, four guys at a time. I happened to pull the draw to take off in the first line. So I thought that was really good luck. It only ended off with the official telling me to go, go, go because I can't waste time. Everybody's got to get off the line. Guys behind me are waiting. And uh, that's when it happened. Just right through the pylons, picked up about 25 meters, engine died on me, and I had to land on the farm right next to the takeoff of the Icarus. I mean, how bad a luck could you get? I mean, just think about it. You know, the, you know the guy that came up with the saying, rather have bad luck than no luck at all? He is a real big asshole. He needs to be hunted down if he's still alive, and he needs to be murdered in the bloodiest way possible because it's absolute crap. I'd rather have no luck and make my own luck than have bad luck because that is real, real bad luck. Right off to the pylons, I get to wave the peanut gallery off, and then the engine dies, and I've got to land on the farm next door. That's <laughs> so embarrassing. But it happened, and you know what? In, a, in, in some ways, I'd rather prefer that than have the bad luck right at the end like some of the other races had, um, not being able to finish the race. So I guess, um, I guess it's not all bad, but this is where we start our story. See, I made you think there was the only one having a hard time at the start, where in fact, everybody was having a hard time. The wind changed. Pressure increased, something was happening, but the pilots were just having a real hard time. But for those that got airborne, the race tactics started to kick in. Now, I did the race on the Instinct 230. I was going to do it on the air flight, but I sucked on it because, you know, I'm not used to flying low hang points. And man, if I just had that machine like a week earlier, I would have had enough time to practice with it. And I would have had an eight hour, 30 minute range. I mean, can you imagine that for the Icarus? That's that's like the, the biggest advantage you can imagine. But nevertheless, you know, um, I, I flew it with the instinct and I was still taking off with 28 liters of fuel, but I burn at six liters an hour. So I couldn't make the border as a straight flight. If I were to try that, I would gamble the whole race because of an outlanding uh, far away from a, from a fuel station that could have, you know, could have cost me heavy. So I went for a safe bet, conservative move, flew to Alice Ross, and the eventual winner of the race, Alan Huffner, did the same thing. He also had a limited range, didn't carry too much fuel, and headed straight for Alice Ross. And this is where I got a huge advantage, at least, with my glider. I was able to catch up to Alan. Even though I took off 45 minutes behind him, I could catch up, because I was doing about 45 knots with the Hadron X. It is a ridiculously fast glider once it gets airborne. All right, and so... There was uh, Pavel Brezina and Bashan Fahiran. Those two guys were the race leaders because they could actually go straight for the border. Now, Bashan was, you know, he's, 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 he was ridiculous in this race, really. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a humongous guy and he was able to pack with takeoff something like 40 liters of fuel, 40 to 45 liters of fuel. I'm not sure how much that was, but can you imagine that's like carrying three jerry cans, two and a half jerry cans of fuel with you for takeoff. And so he had the range, but the reason why he packed that fuel was because he burned something like seven and a half to eight liters an hour. So he really had to pack it to be in the race lead. Pavel Brezina was just, you know, he had a hard time with the takeoff, 
But once airborne, he was having a smooth flight for that F flight, that F two hundred, and uh, you know he could just chase down Bush and stay with him and meet, meet him at the border. So for that's where the the race really split up into to two groups: Bashan and Pavel, me and Alan, and there was another uh, Nirvana pilot with a trike that actually um, that actually caught up to me as well. So uh, yeah, um, the race started getting interesting. Once again, it's one of those. Absolutely the worst fucking luck possible for me, not for the rest. Well, I guess there's some guys that have got worse luck, but anyway. Every time I have to walk 150 meters to set up for takeoff here in Ellis Russ, and as soon as I'm set up, the wind is turned on 180 degrees. So, not feeling the good vibes. Sorry for the cursing, but I had to leave it in so you guys have some idea of how tough this really is. My tongue was dry inside my mouth I wasn't thinking straight I was just so tired of walking up and down up and down that field the most frustrating thing is I caught up to Allard and he was able to push his glider out you know fold his glider out machine everything ready and as soon as he's ready for takeoff it just the wind just stabilizes it's smooth it's laminar he's able to pull it up and there he goes I can't tell you how how frustrating that is I mean, somehow that video tries to bring that across, but really, you just want to start kicking turds all over the place. It just—it's really that bad. Eventually, I did get off the ground, and um, you know, with me being so tired and all, I for forgot to put oil on my newly mixed for fuel. So uh, I had four liters of fuel left in my tank, and um, I put in an extra twenty liters of fuel, and that was unmixed. So by the time I got to the, you know, as soon as I got airborne, <laughs> you can imagine just being so glad to be airborne, I just said, stuff it, the, the engine can burn, I'm out of this race. I'm not going to go land again in that crappy field and try and put oil in there, sorry. You know, it's just the way this race is going to end for me. So I flew that 100 kilometer leg, well, it's not 100, it's about, it's about 60 kilometers from Ellis Ross to the border, and I flew that leg without mixed fuel. And that engine just kept on purring, just kept on going and going and going, and no problems at all. Uh, yeah, that was that was quite brilliant. Yeah, so, uh, driving a fucking Mac One on the back of a bucket, just south of Botswana, the southern boundary of Botswana, uh, trying to find a takeoff spot. And I got a friendly helper looking for a place, and uh, it's exciting. Got about an hour and a half left for the sunset, and if I want to make up anything that I've lost in the race so far on the race leaders, then I've got to be able to do something about that now. But check out the speed we're driving at. I don't take shit here, bot man. I'm here with Lenny. And he was the nice enough guy to give me a transport to the garage that was, or the field that was supposed to be 11 kilometers from the border and ended up being 20. So, adventurous, thanks for that nice little booby trap. Uh, this is my accommodation for the night. And uh, I'll be sleeping here. Yeah. That's the field station. There's the field I'll be taking off from tomorrow morning. That's the field station's name. Got it? Good. Bye. Okay, so end of day one on the Icarus Trophy, and I got a, I got a hand it to the adventurists. It really is an adventure unlike any other, because I mean, like they said, they also mentioned something about you'll have your best and your worst flights. I think today was probably close to that because the when when the day started off. I literally flew through the pylons and there was a fuel restriction on one of my uh, on my reserve tank which caused me to have an outlanding almost immediately just like one field one farmer field opposite like 500 meters from the um, from the start and that set me back about an hour to get off the ground again because I didn't I didn't try and walk back I took off from where I landed and I was I was pretty intense um, the rest of the of the flights went went flawless. I mean, uh, machine worked perfectly. 
I was able to catch up to the race leaders, um, uh, Alan Hafner, and um, then what happened on the Icarus X happened again with me, and that was the wind was perfect for Alan to take off, and then as soon as I got to get my ass in the air, the wind just keeps changing, keeps changing. It was just a bloody nightmare. Uh, I wonder if anybody filmed my little tantrum I had there, but I was cursing at the wind, <laughs> like a like a sailor madman. Um, yeah, I guess I could have had a better, a better luck streak to get me further, but I got through the border. That was lucky enough. Uh, if I wouldn't have made it this far, then the border hold up tomorrow morning could have been a disaster because anybody coming through the border tomorrow will have to face finding a takeoff field. And this is what ate up all my time from 3 p.m. up until 6 was merry-go-rounds from the locals sending me driving around looking for fields with you know I had a nice enough guy was trying to give me a lift um, to which we are allowed by the rules to to find a field close to the, the border and some guys gave us some advice so I think it was just on purpose and they just sent us on a, on a goose chase wild goose chase so yeah I'm I'm stoked to be at the field now um, at, the, at a fuel station where I can take off early in the morning. I think that's better than most pilots will be facing tonight. This I, I could briefly see a few breakdowns, etc. But I could have been somewhere in the bush. That's why I called it. I mean, I could have flown for another uh, 45 minutes, but that wouldn't have gotten me to my final destination. So I decided to play it safe for once and um, hold back for tomorrow morning to give it a harder push and hopefully rely on the reliability of the Nirvana, uh, it's known for that, it doesn't really give breakdowns. Um, so I'm just hoping I don't get any technical problems because this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. In the first guy to make it all the way to the end, he's the one that, uh, that wins. So I don't see myself out of the race, I see this as the end of the beginning. The race is only starting now. So um, yeah, check out this view. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, that's me, Gene Cousin, signing off.